If you have one of these multi-use crimping tools and you're not sure how to use the tool, choose the correct terminals, or have other questions, you should find this video helpful. I'll go over some basic knowledge about crimping electrical terminals and then crimp a terminal onto a wire. The common reasons to use a terminal is that you need to connect a stranded wire to a screw terminal or onto a mating connection and to join two wires. The most common type are fork, ring, spade, these are also called disconnects, and splice connectors, also called butt connectors. They may be insulated, non-insulated, or insulated with heat shrink on the ends. Most crimping is done with stranded wire, but some terminals are listed for use with solid wire. Here's a factory connected terminal that's attached to a solid wire. Depending upon who manufactures the terminals, the quality can vary greatly. Increase the odds of a good connection and buy good quality terminals. They will crimp better and are plated to prevent corrosion. One of these Thomas and Betts splice connectors will cost about a dollar. A local electrical supply house will sell better quality terminals such as Amp, Thomas and Betts, or Panduit. The higher quality terminals are matched to a specific crimping tool. There are hundreds of tools and terminals. It's important to match the wire size with the correct terminal size. The wire size is often printed on the cable jacket. Printed on this cable is 18 AWG. The AWG stands for American Wire Gauge. Red is usually 22 to 18 gauge, though sometimes they'll accept 16 gauge wire. Blue is usually 16 to 14 gauge wire, though some of the blues will accept 18 gauge wire. Yellow is usually 12 to 10 gauge, though they will also sometimes accept 14 gauge wire. The best thing to do is to look closely at the terminal, and most likely the wire gauges that the terminal accepts is stamped or printed on it. It'll be very tiny, and you'll need a jeweler's loop or a magnifying glass to read it. Earlier, I told you that crimping tools are often compatible with specific terminals. This $10 tool is a universal one, but if used correctly, and especially if you buy quality terminals, it should make a reliable crimp. I'll be using a Thomas & Betts terminal, so I'll use that company's products for this video. This fork terminal accepts 14 and 16 gauge wire and is listed for use with WT200 pliers, the least expensive Thomas & Betts crimping tool. They currently cost about $50. Ratcheting type crimpers do the best job, however, that can cost several hundred dollars. The WT200 tool opening for insulated conductors is similar to the ones on the generic tool. There is a gauge on the tool that its colors correspond to the terminal colors. The gauge indicates how much pressure to put on the jaws for each size terminal. The universal tool has three different openings and they're color coded to match the color codes of the insulation on the terminals. If you buy terminals that are listed to be used with the WT200 pliers, they will be compatible with the generic tool. The disadvantage is that you'll have to guess how hard to squeeze the tool. The Thomas and Betts application tooling book found on their website shows which type of Stacon brand terminals are listed with the WT200 pliers. If you buy terminals that are listed to be used with the WT200 pliers, they will be compatible with the generic tool. The disadvantage is that you'll have to guess how hard to squeeze the tool. 
The barrel of the terminal has two functions. The larger diameter part of it provides support for the wire's insulation, and the narrower part of it is the part that's crimped on the bare wire. The better quality terminations will have a metal barrel under both parts of the insulation. If your crimper is narrow and the barrel of your terminal has metal under both sections of it, you'll have to make two crimps. Cut back the insulation on the wire so that the insulation rests against this part of the barrel where it narrows up and a very small amount of the copper conductor uh, called the brush uh, is exposed at the metal terminal end. I don't recommend using the wire cutters on this tool. They're of low quality and it's unlikely you'll be able to get a clean cut. I prefer this kind of cutter and stripper. They tend to do a very nice job. Strip the wire back. We're going to go in the number 14 stranded. You'll want a nice clean cut and there shouldn't be any strands of wire left behind in the insulation. Some people tell you to twist the wire with your fingers. I would not recommend doing that. If you think about it, if you were to touch a shiny piece of copper with your fingers, you'll leave a mark and the copper will oxidize. I don't think that you want your wire to oxidize inside of the terminal. You want the strands of the wire to have their natural twist just like it came from the factory. Insert the wire into the terminal. You don't want to bend any of those strands over. And when you have it pushed into the terminal, if you cut it correctly, you'll be able to see just a little bit of the brush sticking out at the end of the barrel. The insulation is pushed against this part of the barrel. I'll use the 14 to 16 gauge opening with the blue dot. And since this terminal has the metal barrel at both the wire and the insulation positions, I'll make two crimps. Center the tool on the barrel and close down. And then I'll do the same on top of the wire insulation. There's what the brush end looks like. And here's a shot of the insulation. There's a little bit of the brush sticking out at the end of the barrel. If I give the terminal a tug, it's firmly in place. The generic tool can't crimp this kind of terminal. It can crimp a non-insulated terminal. The generic tool has three different openings to crimp non-insulated terminals and they are similar in shape to the WT200 tool. To crimp a non-insulated terminal, notice that the terminal has a seam. Place that seam so the center of the seam is in the halfway point of the semicircle on the tool and the opposite end of the seam should match up with the pointy end of the tool. 
then simply put your wire inside and crimp the terminal. I hope you found this video helpful. A thumbs up is always appreciated. Click on the channel name, Know How Now, to find other videos. And thanks for watching.